Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we're going to look into chapter 14 of A-Level Physics, Stationary Wave. And this is the chapter outline and something that we're going to look at. It's going to be a relatively shorter video. Now let's look into the difference between what we learned in the last two videos, progressive wave and this video, stationary wave. So progressive wave is the type of wave that transfer energy from one end to another. Whereas stationary wave, it is a type of wave that is formed due to the superposition of two waves. They are formed due to the superposition of two waves. And there is no net energy transfer during the process. So in this video, we're going to just focus on that. And when you're learning stationary wave, these are the few terms that you need to understand. First term is the term node. It is a point, which is the circle here, where the medium does not move. This is when destructive interference happen. Whereas the antinodes is where medium vibrate with the maximum displacement. And that's when constructive interference happen. So we're going to use these terms very often in this video. So please take note. Now stationary wave on a violin. I'm going to use this as an example because I'm also a guitar player. So when you are plucking a violin string, you, cr you are creating a stationary wave by generating wave that reflect at the fixed end, which is around this end, interfering to form nodes and antinodes. And this is what I mean. So I'm going to just show you the timeline of how stationary wave work from t equal to zero to t equal to the period. So the wave are in phase here at t equal to zero. That's why you can see that there is constructive interference at the anti nodes. And nodes is over here, phase n, no displacement. So that's when the two waves are in phase. That's why we have a resulting wave that is higher in terms of its amplitude. So this is when t equal to t over four one quarter of the cycle and destructive interference happen here. You can see that wave blue and wave orange, they are traveling in antiphase. This is why the resulting stationary wave is zero. And as we move on to T over two, again, they are in phase. So we have constructive interference happening. And at three quarters, destructive interference happen because they are traveling in antiphase. And we go back to T. It's a full cycle again. So this is the whole process of the stationary wave. So from the graph, here are a few things that you can derive. The distance between two consecutive nodes and two consecutive antinodes is equal to the wavelength divided by two, half of the wavelength. So this information is going to be useful when you're calculating distance in a while. So the separation between adjacent node and antinode will therefore be lambda over four, a quarter of the wavelength. So we kept on the formula of speed, v equal to f lambda, we're also going to use this. But for stationary wave, it actually has no speed because there's no energy transfer. And it is the result of two progressive waves traveling in opposite direction with the same speed and frequency. And the interference create points that appear stationary, which is the node, and points that oscillate, which is antinodes. But since the pattern does not move along the medium, the stationary wave itself has no propagation speed. Now, having talked so much, let's solve some questions. Two consecutive nodes in a stationary wave are separated by 0.5 meter. So what this tells us is that 0.5 meter is half the wavelength. So which means that a full wavelength is equal to one meter. And then they give us the frequency of the wave is 120 Hertz, calculate the speed with frequency and lambda. I can just multiply them together to get the velocity of the speed wave. Again, the reason why this is one meter is because the two consecutive nodes equal to half the wavelength. But because I want the wavelength, that's why I multiply it by two. All right, now let's look into stationary wave in string instrument. So when string is plugged, stationary wave formed due to superposition of wave traveling in opposite direction, both from this way and also from this way. Now in string instrument, especially guitar or violin, something that you will learn is this first, second, third harmonic. So first harmonic is the fundamental frequency within the entire string. That means it's just the normal frequency. Whereas second harmonic, as we will learn it later, is one octave higher, and third, and so on. And learning this harmonic is important because it helps us to know how a specific instrument produces sound, and it also helps in terms of sound production. Now I'm just going to go into how first and second third harmonic look like in terms of their wave. As for first harmonic, this is how the string will vibrate. So fixed end here, they will serve as notes, and the midpoint will be the maximum displacement, which is the antinodes. So we have two nodes and one antinodes, and each harmonic corresponds to a specific frequency. So first harmonic, it showcases the fundamental mode of vibration being the lowest frequency. So F is the frequency, and the lambda here is 2L. So this distance between the two nodes is L. So as we have learned, 
the distance between nodes is half the wavelength. That's why a full wavelength will be equal to 2L here. Right, now let's go on to second harmonic. That's how a second harmonic graph looks like. So it occurs when string vibrate in two equal segments, and this creates a stationary wave which has one, two, three, three notes, and two anti notes. So the frequency is 2F here now, and in music sense, it means that the music produces one octave higher. So if you do music, you might know what I'm talking about. And as for the wavelength, is lambda. Again, the distance between node is half lambda, so I have two distances. That's why the full wavelength is one lambda. Now, third harmonic is the same, which is one more cycle, all right? The sound that is produced is one octave and a perfect fifth higher. So if you look at the wavelength here, how do we derive that the wavelength is two over three L? So again, you can see that from here to here, it's I over three, and L over three is equal to lambda over two, all right? That's why if I want the lambda, I will just move the 2 into the other equation. So I got 2 L over 3, which is 2 over 3 lambda here. So that's first, second, and third harmonic in a string instrument. So for the air inst column instrument, it's the same as well. They produce stationary wave as air vibrates within the tube. So you were going to close this tube, close this tube, to make sure that they vibrate differently to produce different harmonic. Now let's look into the last part of the lecture, measuring the speed of sound. The distance between consecutive notes and anti notes correspond to half the wavelength. And with the frequency provided, we can calculate the wave speed, which is something that we have done just now. All right, but how do sign measure where is the notes and where is the anti notes? That's when you have the Kund dust tube. It is used to measure the wavelength of sound in an air column by observing how fine dust like that, they gather at the notes and clear at the anti notes because there is a displacement in anti notes, right? And that's how it looks like. And the distance between two adjacent dust will then be measured which will give you the half the wavelength. Remember, the distance between nodes is half the wavelength. And with that information, they can just apply this formula to calculate the speed of the wave. And at nodes, the air particles have no displacement because these points experience no vibration. That's why you can see here. And at anti nodes, the air particles oscillate with maximum displacement. And this is how scientists use this Kuhn dust tube to measure the wavelength and the sound speed using stationary wave. And that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.